Good afternoon. Assalamualaikum. Uh, anak-anak, cikgu-cikgu semua. Thank you for coming. This is our second uh, so-called practice or mock discourse session. Okay. So, um, I think Alhamdulillah we've been practicing since late last night. Sampai bola pun we have to sacrifice. Okay. So, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Anwar Yusof. Uh, officially, I'm with Cybersecurity Malaysia. Tapi for today, okay, what we do is we do role playing. Okay, uh, konon konon, I ni menteri jabatan perdana menteri, and I have 100 million to be given out. Okay, so this 100 million ni either we want to give to Team A, which is representing the industry, or kita nak bagi kat professor professor kita from the academia. Okay, so I'm not joking. Okay, go ahead. Cheer them up. Okay, give them semangat. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> but but then again, you know, what, what is this money going to be used for, right? So the topic of our so-called discussion or discourse today is that who plays a bigger role in ensuring cybersecurity education and awareness? Is it the industry or is it the academia? Okay, so now these are the teams. Team A is industry. Ah, they're confused, ah. Okay, and team B is the academia. So we have our panel of experts. Uh, I'm proud to introduce my friend, Cik Malik, chaired by Mr. Stan, Puan Tan, Cik Iswadi, and Puan Ramona. All right. Now, uh, the format, the format, I think everybody know, this is not your typical debate. Nah. This is more like a uh, board of director of your presentation <coughs> where each side have to present their case. Okay, and each team member is given seven minutes, okay? Each person is given seven minutes to present your points, okay? The word here are points. You are not arguing against one another, you are just presenting your points why that so-called 100 million is to be given to you, okay? So understand, uh, you are not here to whack one another out or to blow the daylight out of each other. You are here to present your case. Faham, yeah? I think we have gone through this before and uh, without much ado, I would like to get the first speaker. Are you guys ready? Boleh, yeah? Okay. So, uh, first speaker from Team A, you are given seven minutes to present your points. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to our chairman, honourable judges, uh, gracious timekeeper and the house. At first, first and foremost, I would like to apologize for our late appearances because we had some technical, technical difficulties. Now, before I start, uh, I'll first like to introduce my officers. Uh, I, as the first speaker, am the CEO, and uh, I will be talking about uh, the products that we use as technologies uh, to use and to use it as mediums to ensure cyber security. Okay. And then my second speaker is the Chief Financial Officer and he will be speaking about the financial strength and incentives. And my final and third speaker is the Chief Information Officer. He will be speaking about the research and developments. Okay, moving on to... Okay, this is my point. Now, before I start my point, I would like to first explain a little bit about our title. Who plays a bigger role in ensuring cybersecurity, education, and awareness? Okay. How did this topic came up? Exactly. Well, it's actually because of this, cyber threats. Malware, malicious, viruses, lots and lots of it. Next. Okay. So, what did... Uh, this cyber threats actually contributes to the fall of the economy. Now, as you can see, Malaysia is the sixth most vulnerable to cyber crime. And this is actually from Kaspersky. They have made a research on 2012 about the threats. And as you can see, from the beginning of January till the end of December, it has increased rapidly. Also, also, now I will tell you why is it 
that we why is it that there is a lot of sectors that actually contributes to ensuring cyber security education and awareness but we have strong we strongly believe that the industry the industry is the most the industry has the upper hand in ensuring cyber security public cyber security education awareness now to my first point the people rely on the product the product that we make for for what for information like let's say we create a handphone the handphone they will use it they will use it to stay connected to people it, it, it is their personal belongings and it will be it will it makes that easier to access to information so uh, like one of the incentives that DG, we take uh, examples as DG, they, what they have done is actually they have, they had held out a campaign, they held out a campaign of DG CyberSafe, which is, which is uh, a campaign where they, this is actually a campaign where they teach about the cybersecurity of cybersecurity. What's it, why is it important? Why do we need it? Okay. So, through this, we can, through this incentive, why do we ask, why do they do this? It's because, uh, as I said just now, Malaysians are ranked six in the most, six is the most vulnerable in the world, okay? Most vulnerable country to cyber crimes. So, Malaysians, we can conclude that Malaysians are lacking in cyber security education and awareness. So as DG, as a, uh, as DG, they have they have actually made this is because they have funded a lot of money, and when they funded a lot of money, is actually they showing their they can actually keep the profit, but no, they do they do not keep their profit. They actually funded the money for this campaign, which is actually uh, which is to teach cyber safe cyber security. So, with this, I strongly believe that the industry is, plays a bigger role in ensuring cybersecurity, education, and awareness. And for that, thank you. Thank you, uh, Saudara Ikhlas, Ikhlas, right? I think the good research that they have done on Kaspersky, on the mobile market, and what DG is doing with cybersecurity. Okay, I think uh, let's hear it from. Uh, Team B, Academia, Professor, apa nama? Arif, alright. So, please give your opinion on why Academia. Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon. I wish our Honourable Chairman, uh, Wise Panelists, colleagues from the industrial side and Wise Timekeeper. And first and foremost, I would like to introduce my teammates me as the CEO of the company and my friend as the CISO and the tall guy as the CIO and our technical our technical guy. So under the topic of who plays a major role in ensuring cyber security education and awareness, I would say I would strongly affirm you that academia plays a bigger role in ensuring cyber security. First and foremost, I would like to define my topic for today. Why does cyber security is needed? Why is cyber security needed? First and foremost, cyber security is needed because cyber crimes nowadays are at a vast, vast point. They are really annoying the internet users nowadays. So the government created an organization which is the cyber security to prevent and curb the problems nowadays. And there is a research by Star, Star Corporation where they rank Malaysia as the sixth vulnerable to cyber, cyber crime. It was published on May 16, 2013. And I'm sure that cyber crimes are increasing and they're becoming worse. So, cyber security should play their role 
in and sharing this won't happen. But no one knows what cybersecurity does. So who should play their role in educating people and be giving awareness of this cybersecurity? So I would propose that academia plays a bigger role. Based on a research by SKMM, which is Suruhanjaya, Suruhanjaya Communikasi Multimedia Malaysia, there are 30 million of people in Malaysia, and 18, 18, million of, 18 million of them are internet users, and they targeted an uh, increase of 50% of internet users by the next year. More internet users also mean more cyber threats, and more cyber crimes. So that's also cyber crimes are mostly the factors that affect the cyber crimes are social media like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and such. People use the social media to express their feelings. They also express their personal data online. People with bad intentions will use this personal data to do frauds and even financial frauds. So bad things will happen. Uh, based on the research of Norton, there are 300, 331.7 billion are wasted by people only on cyber crimes, which is 593 per victim. This is a huge waste to human, mo human money. So, the cyber crimes give us a very bad impact. There are two main impacts of cyber crimes. First, the economy, and second, the society. On the economy's hand of view, people are wasting their money because of the money threats and such. In the society point of view, people are being scared to socialize because Nowadays, there are cyber bullies where people post uh, bad pictures like naked pictures online and people will be humiliated to socialize with others. So moving on, why we think academia plays the major role in ensuring we educate and giving awareness to these people. The big portion of students, the big portion of internet users are students, as you can see. So academia, has an easy accessibility to the students because they spend most of the time in school and they can teach and educate these people on how to use the internet well. So I would strongly suggest that we, from the academia side, have a really good influence compared to industry to play a role in ensuring education and also giving awareness. Other than that, we think that if, we, if the industrial side to give awareness to the others, their main goal will not be to educate these people, but their main goal is to promote your brands as such. But for us, we are really sincere about giving the education. So with that, thank you. Yeah, very well said, Professor Arif. Uh, academia is always sincere, but industry always trying to sell your product. So now you sell your product again. What are your uh, reasons that you know industry is a better is doing better at uh, promoting cybersecurity education and awareness? Uh, Chief Financial Officer, please. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you to the chairman and assalamualaikum to everyone. Uh, okay, as the Chief Financial Officer, I'll be giving two points for my group uh, to prove to you all that industry plays a bigger role in ensuring cybersecurity, education, and awareness. So, uh, firstly, I would like to in reiterate what my CEO has said. In the first point, even though uh, our organization and industry is a profit-based organization, even though it's a profit-based organization, we still are committed in improving cybersecurity, education, and awareness. Like my CEO has shown you, DG, even though it's a profit-based organization, it's an industry, but it still uses the relationship between the product and the users to promote 
a better cybersecurity education and awareness. So I'd like to move on to my first point, that is financial strength. So uh, basically, to ensure cybersecurity education and awareness, we need money to fund campaigns, to fund research, to make standard modules, to uh, give standard modules to the academia so they can use to teach people. We need money. So in the industry, we can play and we should, and they are playing a bigger role in uh, ensuring cybersecurity education awareness with their financial strength. Because first, they can allocate more money. And secondly, they could make sure the continuous flow of the fundings. So this graph, this graph shows you how the Malaysian, so how the industries in Malaysia are improving, are growing in aspects of tradings uh, and growth of trades. Now, this is, uh, while well, this one is the statistics that uh, shows global growth of IT sectors, which shows that in industry, the IT sector the, uh, is growing at a very good rate and they are capable of finance, uh, they have financial capabilities and they are growing. Secondly, they avoid more losses when they teach and when they ensure cybersecurity uh, cyber awareness and education. This is because through cyber crimes, there are many losers, uh, losses in these uh, sectors and in these industries. So let me show you some statistics. You can see overall uh, in the whole in the whole world, there are five at least 556 million victims of cyber crimes per year. Next one. And this is how much we lose uh, in 2012, just because uh, how much people lose in 2012 just because of cyber crime. And this is what the whole nation lose, loses when a cyber crime occurs throughout the whole year. So, to summarize my point about financial strength is, I have told you about how these industries can allocate more money through these sectors because they have less responsibilities and they have growth in their economic, uh, economically. And secondly, I've shown you that when they ensure cybersecurity, education, and awareness, they lose, uh, they lose less and they, they have more to give to the people. So secondly, I will talk to you about my sec our second point, which is incentives. What are incentives? Incentives are motivation, which means that these industries play a bigger role because they are motivated and they are committed in bringing you and educating you about cybersecurity. So why are, these, uh, why are these industries motivated? Because they have many incentives that the government give them and they receive benefits from what they give from ensuring the cybersecurity awareness in the society. Firstly, they receive incentives such as tax deductions when they make campaigns to ensure cybersecurity and awareness, cybersecurity education and awareness inside society. And they also gain benefit through trust of uh, through consumer trust and loyalty. With that, thank you. Thank you, Chai Zudin. Uh, and also a very good point to be made here is that when uh, there are less losses, okay, the customers can buy more of your products. So, you know, your business can increase. So when people are not stealing, they will be buying. Okay? So, back to academia. What do you have to say to that? Chai Afrik. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to all the POE, the chairmen, and to all the presidents. Okay, to my first point. Okay, uh, my first speaker has said that we, the academian, had played a bigger role to ensure that the cybersecurity in, uh, in the term of 
uh, education and the awareness. Okay. From my first point is, we as an academy will make a syllabus for the primary school, for the uh, secondary school and the universities. Okay. For an example, this ICT lessons. Okay. In the ICT lessons, we uh, can teach them about the benefits of the media social, about the uh, harmful of media social. And it may maybe takes a duration time in, in this particular case. Okay, let's say it's we can make it a two hours in a week for this lesson. Okay, then we as an academy can make an examination for the student who take this uh, syllabus. Okay, uh, so that we uh, can encourage 2.7 million from the primary school students and 2.3 in the secondary school to decrease the amount of the cyber crime in Malaysia. Uh, in, this uh, in this lesson, we teach them uh, for do not misuse this accessibility. So that uh, in uh, 2010, 62% of kids has experienced something negative online. This is because they have misused this. Um, misuse the, the internet accessibility. Then we need a support from the government to giving a gadgets to the student, like one measure, like a one measure notebook. Okay. The government can give uh, the laptop or notebook. Okay. This process of learning is easy to learn. The Gregory Hammers had said that we learn from the computer uh, it had a bit more fun rather than we uh, listening from the lecturer, just talk. Then we uh, also we can gain more computer skills when we get these gadgets. Okay. Then the impact. Uh, we as the academy can encourage five million students in the Malaysia uh, to decrease the the number of the cyber crime in Malaysia, so that we can see that uh, academy plays a bigger role to ensure that. The cyber security uh, in terms of education and awareness. With that, thank you. I think we, we see the point. The key thing here is the contents. Academia can develop the content. But somehow along the way, the poor got in the way. Well, I mean, I'm also repeating myself. Okay, uh, to uh, final, yeah, from the industry side. Inchi Aiman, uh, you want to give us your opinion on why industry is playing a better role in this than uh, academia, please? All yours. Assalamualaikum uh, and a very good morning to the chairman and to the panel of experts. Um, I to talk about the industry capability in researching and development on cyber security. So this is a <coughs> game which was developed by the Wombat uh, Security Technologies uh, to educate people how to spot fraudulent emails with these games. Uh, so these are some examples. Uh, and even uh, it tells you how uh, when you did something wrong, it will tell the correct way to win the game. I will summarize the first and the second speaker contents. So uh, the first speaker has said about the cyber crime that increased rapidly in the 2012. Therefore, uh, people will rely on our products that we create, the relationship of product and consumer is exist. Um, this is to enhance the cyber security safety uh, that the people will be aware of the cyber crime. The second speaker had talked about the financial strengths, uh, which we we can do campaigns, uh, advertisement uh, in medias, and so on. We also allocate more money and loss 
less money, which benefits both uh, industry and the society. Both sides get benefits. No, thank you. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, I think the chief technology officer has spoken, but not much. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, from the academia side, Professor Ponamudu. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Assalamualaikum and a very pleasant afternoon to the chairman, panel of experts, accurate timekeepers, and to all present here. I am from the academia side strongly agrees that we academia plays a bigger role in cybersecurity education and awareness. Okay, moving on to my first point. It shows that teenagers and students use the internet the most, and we want to make them aware of the use of internet. Okay, to do so, we must do campaigns, awareness campaigns, to make sure they are aware about internet. And We must persuade them, the potential users of internet, uh, because uh, the Malaysia, because Malaysia will uh, have more more people as years pass by. So does the students, and so does the user, uh, the number user of internet. Okay. Uh, we must uh, expose to them the awareness of internet through schools, uh, activity and curriculum, like debate and symposium. Uh, this is to, uh, I mean, to differentiate, I mean, to be different with the normal, boring public speakings and, <laughs> and videos. I mean, they need something new to be exposed to internet, right? So, debates and symposium are the are the best method to sh uh, to to act, to make them exposed to you to the use of internet. Uh, so I will summarize my speech uh, my from academia speech. It is true that we academia plays bigger roles than uh, uh, than industry in in or in. Cybersecurity awareness and education, because we make them study the new syllabus of ICT, the new modern, the 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 true uses of internet uh, on social medias and uh, in online studies. So, as a conclusion, it's true that we academia are more influ are a better influence than the industry. I'm not sure whether by having debates, uh, by having this kind of presentation, we're going to create more awareness. Okay, I think awareness is done uh, in many other ways. Industry have their point. You have your area too. Okay, so but anyway, it's good. Uh, we have heard both sides. All right. So now uh, each side is given ten minutes, right? So each five minutes. Yeah, five minutes or ten minutes. Okay. So. Yeah. So each side you have we, we take a break basically now, yeah. I mean for uh for if, if you need to take a biological break or wanna go to the toilet or whatever, <laughs> yes, this is the time to do it. But for, for both of the participants, team A and team B, you have five minutes, okay, to firm up your proposal, okay? Firm up your proposal and then you give us the enlightenment. Alright? So now please discuss among yourself what you have to do to firm up your proposal. Alright, so guys, we take a five-minute break now. Thank you.